Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Kirsten and this channel is all about how I explore the world as an autistic person. Today I want to address something that many autistic people fear, public meltdowns. Many autistic people avoid traveling because they're afraid they'll have a meltdown. For those who do travel, a meltdown or even the threat of a meltdown can wreck the whole experience. So I'm going to give you some tips for preventing meltdowns in airports and I'll tell you what you can do if the meltdown happens. I'll preface this by saying that I did have a meltdown in an airport a couple of years ago. It was hands down the worst travel experience of my entire life. But I got through it. And you can too. My first piece of advice is to get a sunflower lanyard. I spoke about this in a previous video and it really cannot be stated enough. The sunflower lanyard program allows people with invisible disabilities to wear a visible signal, the lanyard, that tells airport staff that you may need extra assistance at some point. When I was approaching the security line at Pearson Airport in Toronto, an airport staff member came up to me and without asking, he ushered me to a special line where there was much less chaos and a much shorter wait. A few days later, I was flying out of Gatwick Airport in London. I believe the sunflower lanyard originated in Gatwick. Gatwick Airport was absolute chaos because it had snowed and all of the flights were late and there were crowds everywhere. As soon as I got to the boarding gate, a lady approached me and told me she had a quieter place for me to wait, just because she saw me wearing the lanyard. I'll put a link in the description that lists all of the airports that participate in the Sunflower Lanyard program. If your airport is listed, get in touch with them and ask them to send you a lanyard. Toronto's Pearson Airport has a lanyard request form right on their website. If your airport is not listed, get in touch with their customer service people and ask them to consider joining the program. They might listen. Next, familiarize yourself with airport procedures before you travel. Review the list of items that are not allowed in your check bags and your carry-on. Find out what you have to take out of your bag when you are going through security. Find out what documents you need to present and when so you can have them ready. The reason this helps is that it reduces uncertainty. Many autistic people, such as myself, do so much better if they know what to expect. In fact, the meltdown I had was a direct result of all of the usual processes having been completely changed. So the more you know, the less anxious you will be. Don't forget to also find out how things work at the airport you're flying into. If there's documentation that you have to fill in, such as a customs declaration, find out if you can do that online. Again, make sure you know what you can and cannot take into the country you're going to. Being caught off guard by someone searching your bag and confiscating something you didn't know you weren't allowed to have can trigger anxiety. This next one may be different for everyone. Arrive at the airport with the right amount of time to spare. Now, for some people, this means getting there on the dot at the recommended time. So if the airline says you have to be there two hours prior to departure, you get there two hours prior to departure. Some autistic people do not tolerate airports very well. My son used to be like this. Airports made him immensely anxious, so he had to spend as little time there as possible. That has changed. Now he's fine with airports. For myself, I have to arrive early. If the recommended time is two hours prior to departure, I'll get there at least three or even four hours prior. Why? Because walking into the airport and being hit with all of the lights and sounds and movements and people is overwhelming for me, and I have to give myself time to stop, breathe, and make sure I'm okay. You know what your own needs and tolerance are, so plan accordingly. Get to the airport when it's best for you, but don't be late. This one is so important. If you recognize the signs that your anxiety is escalating, stop whatever you're doing and remove yourself from the situation. This may involve telling someone like a security screening officer or an immigration official that you're feeling overwhelmed and need a quiet place. I would say that 99% of the airport staff I have encountered have been great. They understand that travel is inherently stressful for some people more than others. They don't want you to be stressed. And if you request extra time or some kind of accommodation, they will help you. Make the request as soon as you think things might be escalating. Don't wait until you're already so anxious that you can barely think. Now, if a meltdown happens, what do you do? Meltdowns look different for everybody and they can be triggered by anything at all. It just depends on the person. For me, it was a panic attack in the middle of the pandemic when the government had suddenly changed the quarantine rules while I had still been away. The new rules and the implementation of the rules and the fact that I was not able to get any information because of the helplines being jammed meant that I landed with no clue what the process was and no idea what was gonna happen. And I think based on this experience, the number one piece of advice I would give you is that if it happens, if your meltdown materializes, accept the help that is offered to you. Airport staff will ask if you're okay, if you need help, if they can move you to a quieter place. Don't fight them. 
For one thing, that could be misconstrued as aggression, but more importantly, they want you to be okay. When I had my panic attack, the officers who were there led me away and found me a chair, and they asked me what was happening. I wasn't initially able to answer them, but they were extremely kind. When I could talk, I answered their questions, told them what they wanted to know, and they were able to help me. Yes, it is scary to be so vulnerable. It's hard to answer questions that can seem personal and delicate, but the staff need the information to A, make sure you're okay, and B, make sure you're not a risk to anybody else. And finally, take the time you need. If you're having a difficult time, no one's gonna rush you. When I had my panic attack, I wanted to leave as soon as it was over and everything was sorted out, but they wouldn't let me. They got me to take the time to make sure I was really okay, and I am so grateful that they did. If you're in a safe spot, don't rush to leave that safe spot unless you're running late for a flight. And those are my tips for avoiding and dealing with meltdowns in airports. In another video, I'll talk about flight anxiety and what you can do about that. If you're traveling, be safe. Let us know in the comments where you're off to. I'll see you next time. Bye.